Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite girl, Habiba Ogundele. Yeah, today I'm bringing you guys into another segment on my YouTube, a new talk show. We have been inviting friends, family, people you guys know, people you don't know, just for them to share their stories and things that motivate them to do what they do, their journey, their career, what makes them tick. And the first person to grace this channel with us is my friend, my big sister, the first person that taught me the inch and everything about YouTube. Anyway, she's a really talented woman. She's a journalist on YouTube. She's here to take us on her journey from childhood to a full-time YouTuber. And I'm going to be dropping hard truth today. It's a little deeper than the G-spot. There are five reasons why she cannot handle the joystick. Now, the truth is not every woman's juicy pot is built to take every joystick that is out there. So I'm urging you to stay tuned. After this break, we'll be right back. We need the name for me to start the intro and stuff. So welcome to my show, Saints so Jane. I'm so happy you're here. I'm really, really excited. Thank you. I'm excited as well too. <laughs> I've always wanted to have this conversation with you for the longest, actually. Okay. I'll be preparing you, but then you've been busy today, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then you're finally here. We have to make the, you know, cha-ching. <laughs> yeah, but then I first thing, I want to say I'm a big fan of your YouTube. Thank I don't you. know how you're doing, but the consistency is beyond me. Like, I really look up to you on that anyway. Because it's really not easy. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get back to the question. How did you grow up? Did you grow up in the basic or the normal Nigeria setting or the cool parent or like you can go out, you can do anything? Because I didn't grow up like that. But then I really want to know how you grew up. Okay, so um, <laughs> I grew up in Delta State. Okay. Yeah, um, in a very not so strict, but yeah, relatively disciplined okay. environment where okay. you go to church, you go to school, and after school you come back home, you have time where you sleep, time when you eat, and time when you study, okay. right? To make it more interesting, during the weekend we go to the club, children's club to oh, you know nice. swim. Wow. Then my my father was working in Shell, so oh, we nice. usually we go yeah. to Shell Club to swim and just eat and have fun with other kids out there. So it was practically wow, like you know secluded kind of upbringing and oh nice like were your parents the kind of people you can literally converse with like have conversations no no because i didn't grow up like that but my dad and my mom yeah. they were both um a disciplinarian okay i think that's a normal african setting yeah. when you don't have a voice it's your parent that yeah. literally does everything Basically. so that, let's 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 talk through your journey through the tv and radio how was it like all right, to be very frank with you, I never really thought I would be working in the media. Oh, right? really? Um, I was that child who grew up not knowing what I wanted. Okay. I just followed the crowd. And that's because I never really had that conversation with my parents. Oh. What they did was put me in good school. You know, decide for yourself. Okay. So I followed the crowd. I was more or less of that kid who wanted to be in science because oh. I felt like being in science class would make you really really brilliant so oh, yeah, I, yeah yeah that's, that's so <laughs> the science subject that I really hated was chemistry I hated it then for the math okay. but nevertheless I tried I crammed okay. and yeah and that's how I stayed in science Going through university, I realized that science wasn't it. Okay. That wasn't the path I should have taken. But if I had that talk with my family or with my parents, I probably think they would have guided me, oh. you know, in the direction because my direction was more of art. Oh. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I got into university yeah. studying pure chemistry. And to be frank with you, I came out of university never using my certificate. Wait, so you mean you studied pure chemistry in school? Yeah, pure chemistry. And mind you, I crammed all through. <laughs> I'm the sort of person... <laughs> that's, I keep, that's amazing. Yeah, that I'm, I'm the kind of person who keeps targets. Oh. Like, I have deadlines. Okay. If my course is going to 
expire in five years yeah. I make sure it has to be five years I do wow. not exceed so all my life I've always had like time frames okay if I decide I want to be working for a person or for a job for like five years five yes. years come even if I'm not prepared something just happens and well I just get off that job yeah yeah well I still really can't believe I studied pure chemistry and you're here that's Nigeria for you, right. where you you go to school, yeah. at the end of the day you come back, there are no jobs, yeah. and so you're left with just yeah. doing what's available, yeah. even if it's not in line with what you studied. Oh, okay. So for me, I, I didn't really come out with a good result, oh. because chemistry wasn't what I wanted. Okay. I okay. never liked chemistry in secondary school, okay. but I had to study it because you know that was the admission they gave I, you yeah i i got i, I probably understand and i i did not want to stay at home <laughs> for one year after secondary school so yeah. i had to go through it yeah. cramming and whatnot yeah and eventually came out Whew. so then i knew okay. i knew that i wasn't going to do anything chemist chemistry or science Along related the line, in line. yeah i knew that but my results <laughs> finalized it. So how did you apply for radio? I mean, I knew I could speak very well, oh, right? Nice. And more of the fact that most radio stations then, back in 2008, because I started working 2008. Wow. Yeah. Back then, if you could speak yeah. correctly, you get the job. Oh, nice. She gets. So I knew that I would be able to get the job because I was sort of. Fluent. So, how did you transition from radio to TV? Radio to TV. Yeah, radio like. To TV. like oh. <laughs> CM, media has made me suffer. <laughs> ah, boy. Nigeria is See, exhausting. Media. Nigeria is an exhausting country to live in, for crying out loud. Like, it frustrates you. And then when you get a job, it doesn't even pay you what you're worth. Yeah. That's, Do you know when I first started radio, um, I wasn't being paid. So we were just leaving off artists. Ooh. Do you get? So I was working in Delta State. Okay. Um, one local radio station there. And the truth is, I always make an imp an impact. I, I will not go into an organization and I will not be remembered for something. Yeah. Do you get? So I was back then called African Queen. I used to go ah! on low cost, but I wanted more because I had responsibilities, my mom, my kid sisters, and I had just, you know, gotten off service. Yeah. So I applied for jobs and I wanted to work in one of the popular um, radio stations. I'm not going to mention uh, the places that I worked. Okay. So I got the job eventually. Aww. And that was when I realized that life in life, Bob, people will just hate you for no reason. Even if they see you for the first time. True. They would just hate you for no reason. That was the problem that I was having with the um, Lebanese people who you know, were taking care of the place at that time. So for no reason, I really didn't know why they didn't give me accommodation because when I first got the job, I told them that I was leaving in Delta State. Yeah. So if I were to move from Delta State to Abuja, then I should have an accommodation. And they told me accommodation was available. Okay. And that's how I got to Abuja. Yeah. Only for the Lebanese people to tell me that um, they weren't expecting me. They are not giving me accommodation and I slept on the floor for like one one year five months but I was still doing this job I was squatting with other colleagues that had their rooms right two colleagues who had their rooms so they were just graceful enough to give me um, the sitting room to sleep so I had to lay the sofas on the ground to sleep my dear it was terrible and that was when I got and the room wasn't even ventilated you get it was so bad and that's how i developed um this respiratory issue oh. sinusitis um, yeah. problem that you know you have chronic kata for a protracted period of time yeah oh. but i kept on doing the job and i made sure i was constantly always proving myself wanting to prove myself whereas there were other people who 
wasn't as good as you. Yeah, and they weren't even proving themselves. They were getting paid, but I had to constantly prove myself. And you know the thing that really helped was the fact that I was trying to make them see that I am good enough on the job. I was actually doing so well. Oh. So much so that they placed me on the overnight and people couldn't sleep because of the content that I was giving out. I was talking about sex relationship okay. and love. And you know, love se yeah. sex sells. Yeah, of right? course. Like, yeah. Okay. And I talked about it unashamedly. You know what, <laughs> built in a society, or we grew up in a society where people cringe. Yeah, and like, I was going about, to get that part. Yeah, get when, you, that when part, you talk actually. about sex, yeah, do you get yeah, what I, I mean? Yeah. And the funny thing is that sex is not a bad thing. Yeah. It's just when you do it and how you do it. Yeah. Religion has made us uh, think that, you know, if you commit this, you'll go to hellfire. You know, especially they place the burden on women. We're diverting. Oh my goodness, we're diverting. <laughs> so can I hold you? And I was about to get to the question. Why do you think Africans shy away from sexual conversations? Like I said earlier, right? Yeah. We shy away from it because we were being told that sex is a sin when mm -hmm. you commit it outside of marriage. We're also told that it's a bad thing for you to do it. Yeah. And that's why you see that women who even you know, finally get married. Yeah. They are very conservative. They're very shy, close circuited. They cannot really express themselves in the bedroom mm. because they feel like, you know, it's a sin. We've been told that we're to keep ourselves till marriage, which is also a good thing, you know? But the fact is when you come out and you tell most especially the girl child that, you know, if you do this thing, I'm going to use tire to, to put around your body and burn you. That was what my mother told me. If you ever come to this house pregnant, when I was in secondary school, if you ever come to this house pregnant, I'm going to put tire around you and burn the you. The one I believe, my mom said, if your man touch me, I'm going yeah, to get pregnant. Yeah, that's, that's practically, every, I'm sure we all have the same parents. Yeah. I don't know what school they went to together. My mom told me, they if will man tell you, get if a guy touches you, you will get pregnant. Yeah, exactly. So, and do you know that thing really affected me? Growing up in my secondary school, right? Yeah. I, I couldn't stay in the same class with a guy. As in like, what I mean, after after, after school, school extra, right? you're waiting for extra yeah. more classes. You couldn't be in the same stuff. space it, with it, them. You, yeah, I couldn't be in the same space with them. Like, I noticed that I would be in school, maybe reading, and if a guy just walks into the into the classroom, not even saying anything, just sitting at another place, right? Yeah, I start to fidget and sweat, sweat in my armpit. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. god. I am telling you. I also had um, periods where they would tell you because I was really religious. Oh. I was born again when I was a teenager. I was going to church and everything. So I had a, I had periods in in church where they would call yeah, the girls too. to come out and dedicate their virginity to God. <laughs> Yeah, <gasps> so I'm, deep. I'm telling you, oh. that you're dedicating your body to God as the temple. His temple. Oh. So uh, nobody is expected to see your body until you're, you're married. married. So you're keeping yourself for one man. And me, I carry that thing on my head. <laughs> Secondary school, I had no boyfriend. University, I went through without no boyfriend. It was when I came out of university that I just realized that, oh my, I'm getting old, old. Are you I'm not, serious? I don't know what it feels like to be in a, you a know, relationship. in a relationship. So I got into my first relationship when I was 27. <laughs> Are you joking? I'm not joking. <laughs> Maybe we should cut this out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. How? So, yeah. like, like, because I, I, I really took it seriously. But wait, wait, wait. Were you ever heartbroken after them? Heartbroken? No. I was the one running out of that relationship. Even that first relationship when I was 27. It lasted for nine months. How were you comfortable though? Because like it's something you've never done before. How was it? I was always... Are you not listening to me? I was always calling off the relationship. I called oh. off that relationship four times. And the, the guy was really nice oh, to me. Yeah. Really nice to me. But I just felt like... And what he wanted wasn't what I wanted to give to him. Oh. I wanted a situation where, okay, we get married and we do it. But... Yeah. The generation can't wait. 
We cannot wait. And I am very adamant. I have coconut head, so <laughs> that was just it. So basically, I think how I kept myself till that moment was not necessarily because I wanted to keep myself for one man. Mm. It was because I wanted to yeah. keep myself away from contracting STDs or STIs mm. because I am a germaphobe. Anything germs, oh, anything that okay, can okay, cause okay. me. Your to skin is very sensitive. No, right anything now. that can cause me to fall sick. Mm. I, as in my head starts to think so many things. Even as much as kissing, I start to freak out because I don't know how many persons you've kissed. So I don't want you to come and terminate me <laughs> with herpes or any of that kind of thing. So I. I feel a lot more comfortable when I know that I am not sexually involved with anyone. Yeah. At the end of the day, if any, if I fall sick, I know that it, it it's has nothing my, to yeah. do with, you know, sexual, sexual, thing. whatever. Yeah. So that was it. But we live in a generation where people get into relationship mm -hmm. and boom, bam, bam, they want to have sex. Yeah. And if you're not giving them that, that means you don't love them either. Yeah, you're That's they're the either thing. cheating or they just walk out of the relationship yeah. so i think that has really affected a lot to women especially women who go through this purity culture purity culture in the sense that you you're waiting you oh, know yeah. till when you get married, married. Yeah. some women who have actually waited yeah. right they end up having a condition called mm -hmm. vaginismus where the the juicy part I, for youtube i wouldn't want to use okay. you know the a mm -hmm. actual words so that you get monetized at the end of the day yeah yeah the juicy part just spasms on its own it rejects the joystick the joystick is the man's bola you oh. know what i mean yeah <laughs> so it what is all you don't know like, what, I, you don't I, know what no, i do i do but then i'm learning more so i'm surprised yeah yeah it just spasms and rejects the okay. the any intrusion of whatever even tampons you can't put in tampons you can't even put in the what do they call it now he's Oh, okay. Manhood cannot get in there. It becomes really painful. Mm -hmm. That's because you stay. It becomes a condition where, it, you know, it's not very, can, not, yeah, not except you wrong. meet a therapist to talk you through because that's also a psychological thing. You've lived all through your life not having intercourse, yeah. and at the end of the day, when it's time for you to do it, yeah. You can't because you're afraid that it's it's going to be painful. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So your your juicy pot tightens up. I really enjoyed this conversation because I'm getting to know more about intercourse, women. So can you talk us through how, when, how you started YouTube, what inspired YouTube? Okay, I started YouTube because I got laid off like in 2020. So how did you pull so much crowd? Oh. First and foremost, I started out, you know, doing vlogs. Okay. But I am an indoor person. I don't go out. So I don't have like a social life where I travel here, I do stuff here. My life isn't that really intriguing. But I just remembered while I was working with one of the radio stations, I was talking about sex, relationship, and a lot of people liked it. I made, you know, a, a huge fan base. And I know already that sex sells. Okay. So I was like, okay, I want, I got laid off. I got scammed of my, my house rent. I'm on the verge of, you know, being kicked out. Mm. And I was also begging my boss to get me back on. But, you know, shit happened. And I knew he wasn't going to let me back anymore. For something that I didn't do, I didn't do anything wrong. All right? I was just being victimized. I just don't want to talk about it. I was almost suicidal. Oh, really? Yeah, because... On, why are you doing oh, you, Because I, you, you, never, know, you never showed that suicidal part of you. I because I, had, you friends, you know because I had friends that I was talking to. It was no. really traumatizing. Do you know what it means for you to lose your job? No. For something that you did not do wrong, and then you beg for it, and it's been given to someone else who oh. didn't even have as much experience as you did. You know and then they constantly tell you that oh you're not good enough they they tell you that to make you feel that you're not good enough just because you're not 
you know you're not bulging into what they want yeah. from you yeah. do you get what i mean yeah. so i just started out i just remember dima on me i knew that this girl was uh, looking fly and she was also making money she was interviewed on um cnn do you get so i knew that people were making money off youtube so I, I felt like, okay, so what's the first thing that I can do? Get on YouTube and just start something. But I started out vlogging. It wasn't making any impact. I would just have like 20, 20 views. And I wanted to get monetized immediately mm. because I needed money. There mm. wasn't anything to fall back on, save for my friends who came. That's why it's really good for you to have good friends. I had good friends who came and they helped me out pay my rent. So I started working and i was now talking about relationship mm. how to kiss how to do this how to do that so a friend of mine now told me she said see jane if you're teaching people how to kiss you have to show them all i said me god forbid i cannot bring myself down to come and show people how to kiss for what mm. he he told me something he said see jane when you show people this thing that's the, that's how you get lots of subscribers mm. that's how you get lots of views and that's how quickly you get monetized so i said okay no wahala that's how I started, um, you know, bringing oranges and uh, showing people, uh, okay, uh, how to lick her like a champ. <laughs> Views, pow! Then, um, um, uh, um, another um, content that took my video, my, my channel to a new, whole new level, subscriber till to date, it has over 2 million um, views. Mm. What, what? How to give a man a <laughs> head. <laughs> <laughs> How to give a man head and make him cry? Like to, yeah, that's what people hey, like to. see me sucking cucumber. <laughs> I hope my mother doesn't see that video. I have told my kid sister, <laughs> if Momsi asks <laughs> you what my channel is, to to till to, to, till today, Momsi knows that I talk about sex, uh, but yeah. because I told her in case anything mm -hmm. happens, maybe yeah. a relative shows her my yeah. video. I just told her, I said, Momsi, see you. You know me. Yeah. But I talk about sex, love, and relationship. Mumsy said, make sure you add God in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, this woman, this woman doesn't even know what her child is doing on YouTube. <laughs> that um, video took yeah. me, you know, took my channel to a whole new level. In, fi in five months, I got monetized. Wow. And after that day, I got monetized. I can still remember on a Sunday, subscribers just kept coming through one video that i did which was how to leak her like a champ oh i know that oh six thousand subscribers in one week whoop wow that's that's crazy but people like to yeah talk about yes people, sex people, people might just be hypocritical about it but they like I it think, i think now a lot of people are open to it because the truth is that sex is one of the reasons why some marriages break yeah. sex finance two things aside the fact that god has to, has to be your threshold in yeah. your relationship or in your marriage those two things are um very important so if your sex life is bad trust me it's going to it's going to be affected in the long run whichever way so the last question if you had to go back and change something or things in your life in your journey what do you think those things are oh i would definitely one thing actually okay i'll definitely change working for anyone oh. because um my experience was really bad i got laid off twice on a job that i know i <laughs> i do practically very well oh. um one was out of sexual harassment the other one was you know um during the recession in 2015 mm. so they were trying to lay off old hands and get new ones oh. so that they could pay lesser mm. salaries so i got laid off twice on that on those jobs and those periods that i got laid off it made me realize that look working for people is just rubbish because i have a friend who started building her own interior business and from the time that I left Delta State to come work here in Abuja and the time she started her business, which was also in 2010, she started selling bed sheets. And now she has two big shops in Delta State. She has a walk-in showroom. Wow. Do you understand how big that is? But I got laid off on 
a job that I know how to do, which is media, newscasting, and all of that stuff. And I came out with nothing, nothing at the end of the day. So I felt like a fish out of water. I, I now had to, you know, figure out what to do again. to get my feet back together again or to get myself back on track again. That is something that I would change over again and over again over and over again another thing is not working for not being a journalist in nigeria trust me take it from someone who's worked in the media for for 13 years i'm not saying that it might not be good for other people yeah. but i'm saying generally that media journalism in nigeria is whack they pay you less or they don't pay you at all. Wow. And even if they pay you so much, the, the media houses that, which are apparently very few, the media houses that pay you so well, they would want to sexually harass you. Wow. Do you get what I mean? So at the end of the day, if I do have my kids and they tell me they want to be in, they want to be journalists, not in Nigeria, please go outside. They take journalists for granted in Nigeria. The media houses take them for granted. Things don't work no. in Nigeria because one, even in a private sector, the owners use you yeah. and pay you peanuts or pay you nothing. They make it look as if they're doing you a favor no and they, they build their wealth on your back for years and give you nothing. How, talk about pension. How many jobs, how many private jobs are paying pension? Hmm, true. How many persons can say that they can actually leave their jobs or retire and they have good pension? How many? True. So it's even terrible. The, even the government, the government offices, they still uh, struggle with pensions. Honestly, I would encourage anyone who is still a graduate or maybe who is an undergraduate, undergraduate. please, if you can find a way to make money, um, legit money, by the way, because there are lots of people doing weird stuff just to be wealthy. Yeah. I think a, a social media has created a, a, a level of madness where people want to now acquire wealth in the most ridiculous way. I am not talking about that. You could become a YouTuber, dish out really good content and make money. At the end of the day, what I make out of YouTube, my last job cannot pay me that. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. YouTube pays a lot. A, a lot of these big time YouTubers, even small YouTubers, right? They're making cool cash. Do you know what it means to be paid in dollars in Niger? When a, 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 a who am I stammering like this? <laughs> Naira to dollar yeah. is like five ninety. I swear, one dollar. So if you're crazy. earning, if you're earning a thousand dollars in a month. Yeah. Yeah, 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 big girl. Right? Yeah, big girl. <laughs> Are so you that, kidding? I'm so, I'm so grateful you did this to me. I'm really <laughs> so, so happy. Much. I'm happy that you came on the show. Yeah, I love the sincerity. Yeah, the authenticity that came with you and everything, and the fact that you're open to talk about some certain things. I'm really so grateful. I should be a close book, but <laughs> I, I probably think that's why people love my content. So yeah, yeah. yeah. The if you need to go check out our YouTube channel, I'll put it, I'll put the link in my description box, and I'll put a handle in. The well, screen. you have to be 18 years old to be uh, on my channel. If not, if not, <laughs> you are going to be roasted. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much thank for coming so on my much. show. Thank you so much I am for having home. me. I'm so honored. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell